Yeah, thank you, Shashi. And uh, a very warm welcome to our viewers and our distinguished guest, Dr. Don Akopra from Philippines. Dr. Don is an MD neurologist and founder of Low Carb Health Doctor, LCHD, a clinic and research center located in northern Mandano, Philippines. Dr. Don is a practicing neurologist for more than 20 years. But in the recent past, he expanded his role by becoming a healer when he began publicly advocating the low-carb or LCHF diets and intermittent fasting lifestyle for the reversal of metabolic disorders. He envisions a world where people understand the importance of nutrient-dense foods, thus they attaining balanced mental and physical well-being. And where the true benefits of the low-carb diet is an accepted norm based on real scientific data and evidence-based medicines. So we are looking forward to a lot of learning from you, Dr. Don, for over the next 30 minutes. So we can uh, jump into the session, right? I mean, directly. So uh, first and foremost, just wanted to understand uh, for myself and uh, our viewers, what was the key trigger for you to go low carb? I am approaching low carbohydrate nutrition yogish. Uh, first of all, hi to you, hi to all, hi to uh, Shashi uh, and Anup, I hosted them in a previous podcast before yes. I also to Art. Okay. So, so going back to your question, you can hear me? Can yes, hear me? yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I'm approaching low carbohydrate nutrition from both a personal and a clinical standpoint. Well, when, when I say personal, it's from my own experience. I, I've been a neurologist for more than 20 years here in the Philippines already yeah. and and uh, I'm sure my fellow doctors would be able to relate with what I am going to share here as well as what I've been sharing with many others yeah. in the past uh, two, three years already. So uh, I developed metabolic syndrome. I'm sure for the past three days, metabolic syndrome has been discussed a lot already. Yeah. So the awareness of uh, the general public as well as not just the general public, but many doctors the world over are, it's not really that you know extensive with regards to metabolic syndrome and its root causes. Yeah. But so going back to my own personal experience, we, when when I entered my late twenties and my early thirties, I started you know gaining weight, and it's yeah. mostly the abdominal obesity kind of yeah. You see, my, my, my tummy is getting bigger and bigger. Um, but all throughout those times, I, I thought, I, I was really wondering what in, the, what in the world is causing it because at, at that time, I was adhering to a more or less vegetarian kind of diet, oh, which I would, I would uh, more particularly describe as a pesky polo vegetarian diet because I eat fish. And 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 chicken meat because it's white meat. And okay. Then I eat eggs, but I avoid the yolk. You know the cholesterol. Yeah. I monger. I know. Yeah. So that's my diet. Uh, but then I also eat a lot of you know all, all kinds of vegetables, including the starchy ones. Yep. And uh, the grains, you know, like you know, there in India and here in the Philippines, we love rice. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's my kind of diet and all through those years I think uh, for the next 15 20 years I was gradually gaining weight if you look at my picture there in my, my oh, yes. landing page on my website yep. it was really kind of big before 20 at least 20 pounds uh, yep. bigger than what I am right now. so so there came a point in time wherein I also developed uh, elevated blood pressure okay. my BP was really 140 100 over 110, 90 to 110, oftentimes. Yeah. And then initially, I was just uh, disregarding it. I, I, I think it was due to stress, you know, because I'm a doctor. I have to go see patients, True. even at midnight, you know, stroke yeah. patients, a neurologist. And then, uh, um, aside from that, uh, when I was doing my laboratory, my laboratory tests, I also note that my triglycerides was really almost always way up high, you know, averaging between 180 to less than 200. That's quite high, you know. 
Yes. So, yeah. so I was thinking my my uric acid also was elevated. So I was thinking, what in the world is wrong with me? I'm I'm sticking to this healthy diet because my my main reason why I was doing that diet is my own father. Yeah. Uh, had two uh, myocardial infarctions, which oh. is in uh, lay lay person's parlance, is heart attack. So he died from uh, in during his second uh, myocardial infarction, oh. which was said, oh. that really left a deep impact. I mean, I was a neurology resident. Yeah. That yeah. I said I wouldn't like to follow his uh, his experience because I was thinking he had a heart attack because of yes. having hepatitis, you know. Yeah. So eventually, I was thinking, what should I be doing? And if I had to go through my medical education, I was supposed to be starting medications already for prevention. And all yeah. That. But since uh, I was doing my best to live a healthy lifestyle, including my diet, I was was I was very adamant in doing. In starting medications, yeah. Because in the first place, I I I was doing my best to have a healthy lifestyle because I wanted to avoid medications. And then yep. there came a time that I was hypertensive. So, uh, I asked around. I, I have many doctor friends, uh, specialists in cardiology, specialists in diabetes, endocrinology. Yeah. Uh, the university, uh, which are all already big names. Uh, yep. On right right now, like a resident of a hospital. Okay. You know, like, and then they told me I have to start medication. So, so it's the same thing. I, what was told to me, that's also what they were telling me, and yeah. uh, including friends abroad. So there came a point in time that I really had to start four medications really for hypertension, for, for cholesterol, you know, statins, Statin. yeah. for uric acid. Yeah. And, uh, what was the other medication? I started three mm -hmm. or four medications. Yeah, yeah. But then I was half-heartedly taking them. And then because of that drive to really understand what in the world is wrong with me, I, I made a deep dive back into literature. And, you know, this day's internet is widely available. Yeah. You can go to journals and you know, surprise of all surprises. I saw lots of studies there that, weren't taught to us in medical school, weren't presented in platforms, both uh, here locally in Philippines and international yeah. countries, including studies by, like, for example, Richard Feynman, uh, your, your guest yesterday or the other yeah. day, uh, Dr. Yeah. Eric Westman. So, so, so many, so many studies, including trials, you know, that really documented that the low carbohydrate diet is the most superior diet in terms of. Yes. Uh, Reversing metabolic syndrome, metabol and promoting metabolic health. So uh, it, it's like a disconnect for me. I had cognitive dissonance, what we call it in okay. neurology. It's like, it's like you have evidence, but then it goes against your your belief. That's interesting. What, what it it's cognitive dissonance for me. Yeah. But then, but then it, I was interested in healing myself. So so um, what I did is uh, I, I told myself I'll give this a try. Okay, I'll yep. give this a, just one week. Okay, just one week. Okay. If, Wonderful. If it's yeah, if it's balloony, then you know I wouldn't find any improvement in myself. Yeah. And then when I there came a point in time when uh, like like they say today I was doing low fat and then following day I, I strictly went low carb like ketogenic yep. level. I wanted to make myself my own guinea pig, you know. Yep. So for 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 the next one week I was very anxious. It's like, yeah. what in the world am I doing? I, should, I might be having a heart attack anytime. Oh, okay. And surprisingly, after one week, you know what? My my blood pressure normalized from 140 to over 90 to 100. It became persistently 100 to 110, over 60 to 70 and all that. Amazing. And, uh, yeah. And then I lost, uh, in one week time, I lost, I lost about five to six pounds of my oh, weight. Yeah. And then... Yeah, and then I, I was not hungry because I was following the low carbohydrate yes. dietary healthy fats uh, regime. Right. And, and I was saying, oh, oh my goodness, this is really amazing. And then I continued that for the next uh, month, so and so, you know, you know, about two to three months later, I, 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 I reversed all the metabolic syndrome abnormalities that I yeah. had. That's how amazing my own experiences and yeah. and uh, uh, to to, to 
to, to cut the long story short, yeah. they're actually began advocating for 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 the same with my own set of patients, which yeah. are mostly stroke patients. And if you know, uh, based on discussions from your previous speakers, yep. stroke is a complication, late complication of uh, metabolic and health. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Most most of the patients that I am seeing in my own personal practice are stroke patients. So I have. One of my biggest eureka moments is my my goodness, all of, if not uh, most, if not all of them, had stroke because of metabolic syndrome. And if only I was able to to to, to do yeah. something in terms of uh, do uh, improving their diet for the past fifteen to twenty years, I, I could only think how many of my patients who are probably alive still alive yeah. now, right, and who did not succumb to severe yeah. stroke. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. Uh, so, how long you been uh, on uh, this low carb or ketogenic uh, kind of lifestyle? So, uh, let's say I'm 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 pretty recent to, to this compared to many others. Yeah, even have patients before who have already been doing uh, the right. so Atkins diet. Uh, I've been doing this for the, the past uh, two and a half to three years, more or less. Um, in a disciplined way because uh, I continuously have proven to myself that right. this is, uh, as Ken Berry would say, this is the proper human diet. And being a physician, I, I constantly, I am constantly on the lookout for evidence yeah. and I do my best to apply that evidence in my own right. personal yeah. scenario. And, it's and, and that very sorry. amazing. And and that was the key trigger for you to basically uh, uh, start focusing on uh, ketogenic or low carb as a key intervention in your clinical practice as well. I mean, from let's say uh, being a neurologist for so long, like twenty odd years, and then also starting this as a therapy in your practice, clinical practices, something which is really kind of unheard of. I mean, like uh, we were discussing, there are very few neurologists in the world who are possibly combining these two therapies as such. So you, you want to basically reflect on that. What are the benefits that you're seeing while you are, uh, let's say, embrace uh, low-carb or ketogenic diets as one of the therapies in your clinical practice? I beg your pardon, you, Yogesh. Uh, what, what, yeah, what's so your... uh, my question was, uh, uh, what kind of benefits that you're seeing in your clinical practice uh, as a neurologist, and uh, when you combine, let's say, low carb or ketogenic diets uh, with your patients uh, in their healing as such. So, what are the kind of benefits that you are getting to see in them? And in diseases so, typically to do with neurological disorders. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, stroke, you know, stroke is uh, the yeah. bread and butter for us neuro neurologists. So, there are two kinds of stroke that would be the, the ischemic uh, stroke or yeah. what we call the cerebr cerebral infarction. So the blood vessel in the brain was obstructed by, by atherosclerosis. And the, the second common type of stroke would be the hemorrhagic stroke or yeah. you know, the hemorrhage in the brain because of the ruptured blood vessel. And the most common cause of that would be hypertension, prolonged chronic hypertension that has yes. been there for so many years already. If you look at this, these two mechanisms, atherosclerosis and hypertension. So you could, you could easily relate that to metabolic syndrome. And uh, knowing what I now know, uh, uh, metabolic syndrome, the primary driver would be insulin resistance. And, and then insulin resistance is due to chronically elevated insulin levels or what uh, is called hyperinsulinemia. And yep. This is uh, brought about by chronic uh, intake of uh, carbohydrate dense yep. uh, foods, especially the refined carbohydrate uh, foods, which is uh, common worldwide, not just here in the Philippines and yes. there in India as well, and even in Western countries. So, so for all my stroke patients, especially now that the, those who have survived uh, stroke, uh, when I have placed them on low carbohydrate. Diet, uh, yep. there is a very, very uh, powerful reversal of the the manifestations of metabolic syndrome, in especially hypertension, yeah, and uh, elevated triglycerides, and you know being overweight and obese, which is a big risk factor also for not just stroke but also heart attack. In, in yep. fact, the entire 
uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease spectrum. So be because of that, there would be a whole lot less tendency for my patient to, to have a second repeated stroke. And yep. that works uh, wonders. And, and not just stroke. Uh, recently, I talked to Dr. Angela Stanton, who came up with her Stanton migraine protocol. Yeah. I was wondering how come many of my metabolic syndrome patients on strict low carbohydrate diet, right. come those with migraines are also experiencing a very, very, uh, let's say, dramatic improvement in terms of the frequency. And then I was doing my research and I came across Dr. Angela Stanton. I hosted her in one podcast. Uh, amazingly, the elevated carbohydrate uh, levels hyperglycemia is yep. more or less a very, very important, uh, what do you call this, uh, trigger for mm -hmm. migraine headache attacks. Yep. Yep. And, and not just that, there are so many other things like brain insulin resistance, which eventually leads to dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. There are many studies, on, ongoing studies about Absolutely. Uh, yeah. which, which right. is really, uh, you know, in the Mind-boggling. So, yeah, yeah. This is this is really mind-boggling when it comes to I mean uh, diseases which are uh, supposed to be so chronic, so so advanced, so complex, and can be can be healed with uh, a dietary intervention, which is amazing. So, uh, can you uh, just taking this thread forward, Doctor Don? Um, can you unpack the two aspects that we discussed about? Like, I mean, one is what is wrong in today's food? Is it only the refined foods or is it something which is regarded as healthy, like let's say grains or fruits? Are those also causing or triggering some of these issues? So that's the first part of my question. The second is, if not these, and uh, we have been referring to, let's say, low carb and ketogenic food. So what usually that would consist of, let's say, in your you, you, your country or maybe uh, anywhere else, right? So two, two parts to it. What is not happening in a correct way what is to be corrected in terms of food or nutrition and then what are the things which we probably would need to be consuming more to become healthy yeah that's a very very good question you ask yogesh because in my own experience i i, I repeatedly do some experiments on myself and i also yeah. get to do that yeah i get the my advantage is is i have lots of metabolic syndrome patients because i'm a neurologist and i get to observe them firsthand, the, the yeah. response of my intervention, especially the low-carbohydrate intervention. And my main observation is that even, even minor uh, diminution in the levels of carbohydrate intake, like let's say I have patients who, who just uh, for, for at, at the, at, you know, for, for at, at, I'd say level one, they just, they just uh, remove the, the sweet, Oh, Sugar-based yes. drinks like yeah. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, juices, iced tea, milk tea, and all that. I already I can I can already clinically observe a dramatic improvement in their metabolic yes. syndrome. So the, the 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 more severe the manifestations of the met metabolic syndrome, and the the lower the carbohydrate intake they they, they apply in their in their yeah. own uh, lifestyle, the more dramatic the the improvements I get among my own set of patients. So much that with those who are sticking to the very low level of carbohydrate, like the ketogenic uh, diet and the very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet, even the carnivore diet, which is, uh, I'd say, almost zero carbohydrate. Yes. I, I'd say all, almost zero because there's still glycogen in yeah, yeah. some or, or so, organ meat. Yeah. So the, the lower the carbohydrate, uh, the more dramatic the improvement in metabolic syndrome reversal. Yeah, yeah. And any guidance that you provide uh, to your patients, like when you say low, is it like uh, any guidance, like maybe few 50 grams, 30 grams, anything on those lines? When I do my, when I apply metabolic syndrome, I, I say reversal because the, the five uh, criteria for, for metabolic syndrome, uh, hypertension, uh, abdominal obesity, yeah. which is uh, measured by big, uh, bigger risk circumference. Yeah. Right. Uh, blood uh, glucose elevation, elevated triglyceride, and low HDL levels. Yeah, I can dramatically reverse them uh, with uh, very low carbohydrate 
right? So the, the lower the carbohydrate level, the faster, you know, like when you say ketogenic, less than 30 to 50 grams of carbohydrates per day. Okay. So that means as much as possible, no more rice, uh, avoid the fructose-rich uh, fruits. Uh, just uh, if, if they want to eat uh, fruit, uh, perhaps they can, uh, you know, eat avocado. And, yeah. Like right. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, is is it one thing that comes to maybe our viewers' mind? Is it safe and sustainable? I mean, safe. Probably you already mentioned that uh, when you are increasing fat and protein, uh, your most of the parameters that you mentioned, right? I mean, are getting into th these are those are becoming range bound. So, on that front, I think it definitely is safe. Is it sustainable and affordable? I mean, that is what I think many a times, I think all of us do come across that kind of a question. W what's your take on that? I mean, is it uh, sustainable, low-carb, ketogenic diets? Yeah, definitely, Yogesh. Both sustainable and affordable. Because uh, every now and then in my platform, I, I, I post a, a low-carbohydrate, ketogenic level. It's like, for example, I make my own... Uh, low carbohydrate ice cream oh wonderful <laughs> then people say ah, it's, it's it's quite uh, difficult to maintain that lifestyle no, no i'm just trying to illustrate that i can give myself some treats yes. because I, I i make my own low carbohydrate ice cream and I, I eat it i get to enjoy it but it doesn't mean that the lifestyle would be uh non-sustainable and non-affordable because you know uh there are so many low carbohydrate foods out there that are you know really very affordable like you know the greens vegetable greens oh, yeah. and then uh, here in the philippines chicken chicken is is uh cheaper than fish and meat you know and other red meat yeah so it's really sustainable both sustainable and affordable yeah. and 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 your your youtube channel is very vibrant with all those recipes uh, though i think some of the foods are very much i think uh, uh, philippine specific but uh, i enjoyed watching including the ice cream that you referred right i mean so that's amazing so uh, uh, there is one more aspect apart from the neurological, uh, I mean, diseases that we discussed. Uh, uh, Philippines is also having uh, uh, a lot of prevalence of cardiovascular diseases and cancer. So what's your take on that and whether, let's say, uh, uh, these kinds of uh, lifestyles, like let's say low carb and ketogenic, uh, can that help or is it helping over there in terms of, let's say, CVDs and cancers in Philippines? Yeah, definitely, Yogesh, because I was looking at the most recent statistics. Uh, like last year, 2022, the number one cause of death here in the Philippines is still uh, myocardial uh, heart diseases, which yeah. is, you know, heart attack, myocardial infarction, which is which still aligns with the global top one cause of death based on WHO statistics. Yeah. And then second, not too distant, second and third would be uh, stroke. Or cerebrovascular diseases and cancer, as you say. So, uh, hyperglycemia and metabolic syndrome is is really plays a very significant role in the the you know the development of these diseases. So, if we yes. reverse the root cause of metabolic syndrome, then we foresee that these diseases, these non communicable diseases, would also yep. eventually you know decrease and diminish through the True. years yeah yeah so so one one interesting aspect i uh, would like to understand while we are discussing with uh, let's say uh, esteemed doctors like you what what is the approach that you take uh, let's say a patient patient comes into your clinic uh, how essentially that person is being uh, let's say validated whether he or she is eligible for low carb or ketogenic diets any particular approach that you follow or let's say most of the patients you definitely administer low carb or ketogenic as one of the therapies? That's another perfect question you ask, Yubit, because in my own practice, when I, when I first see a patient that uh, that I eventually get to diagnose with the metabolic syndrome, I look at the laboratories and then uh, my, my, my initial, my, my screening uh, tool would be, I, I look for any irreversible conditions yeah. Because if there are already irreversible complications, I think my time and effort, because it takes time to explain to the patient that they have to yes. improve their, their diet, you know, and all that. So it takes at the very least uh, an hour for me to see a patient if there, it is Wonderful. a metabolic syndrome patient. Yeah. So 
my first screening tool is is there you know severe kidney disease like chronic kidney disease yes is this patient already like let's say bedridden because of a severe stroke mm -hmm. because in in my opinion and in my own personal practice I, I i limit my my low carbohydrate intervention on those patients really because it's like the quality of the, the quality of life that my impact is la much less already yep. But for the greatest majority who still don't have those complications, I I, I ask this this number one question: uh, How how many years more in your life drama would you like to live in this planet? You know, because yeah. I want my patients to be self empowered. Because if they are not motivated and they are not the ones who really would like to keep themselves healthy, I don't I don't see much role much right. significant role in, in in me being their doctor. So once they are, I find that they're really motivated. Like let's say some patients, I want to live up to 100. And then I see that they're really diabetic, hypertensive, all the metabolic syndrome manifestations. And then I ask them, are you willing to Im really improve yourself, uh, in in improve your body and then decrease your medications eventually? And if I get their cooperation, I intervene. And, and yeah. based on my experience, I, I also give them a complete list of foods to avoid and to, you know, to choose because they are the low carbohydrate type of foods. Yeah. And, uh, and out of that intervention, I, I see significant uh, success rate. Uh, I'd say for those who really follow the low carbohydrate uh, lifestyle, I'd say 100% success rate in my own experience. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazingly encouraging to know that. And I think uh, what you're doing, Dr. Don, is uh, miles ahead, right? I mean, in terms of... Uh, a clinical practice. I mean, you're, you're essentially investing your one hour, every patient for every patient, and then just making that person understand why we should be doing that. And right? I mean, that's, uh, uh, that, that's really very, uh, I would say unusual to uh, hear from, let's say the kind of practices that we see, but that's amazing. Um, I just wanted to have probably a last couple of questions, um, a quick time check. So uh, one is about, uh, Indians, right? I mean, in Philippines or otherwise, I mean, for India, any particular message uh, that you would like to have for, let's say, improving our metabolic health? Um, first message I usually give to everyone is uh, your health is your own personal responsibility. It's not your doctors. It's not, you know, it, it works a lot for me because I tell my patients, I am not here to be responsible for your health. It's it's you yourself who's responsible for your health. And that applies not just to, to Indians, but to everybody the world, the Absolutely. whole world over. So when I see that they are responsible for their own health, I get dramatic results in their own experience. And then another thing, uh, you in India and us here in the Philippines, we we have a lot of common denominators. Like let's say yes. we, we love rice, you know, yeah. like they're in India, I think biryani and we have roti. All those uh, foods that are really rich in carbohydrate. I think yes. it's just a matter of understanding that this are I, I, how I explain it to my patients: avoid poison, <laughs> sugar, and refined carbohydrates. It's poison. poison to your body. Yeah, yeah, it's poison. So if 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 it tastes you know um, fantastic, would you still like to you know swallow that poisonous fantastic food? I don't know. I don't consider it food poison. So my patients get to understand that better. And then it makes yeah. it, it it gives them bigger you know and more effective in yeah. really impressing it upon them that you have yeah, to so avoid this this yeah. so th thanks uh, thanks uh, a lot uh, yeah. Dr Don and uh, yeah I'll just hand it over to Shashi and uh, Anup for yeah. final yeah. words just few seconds left uh, Dr Don thank you very much thanks Shashi all for inviting this... me. All this message coming from a neurologist is big. And I think in India, people listen to doctors and that too, you are a super specialist, a neurologist. It has a lot of value. Thank you. And special thanks for the video which you have made for announcing this Metabolic Health Conference of India. Thank you very much. Anup. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Don. And we hope to see you again, you again in all the conferences that we would be organizing down the line. And as Shashi said, thank you very much for promoting us even before we went live. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I I just like to say this is uh much less of my last words. So we we are in this together, so we have to work hand in hand because we are doing this from the grassroots, and we are not industry sponsored. We are sponsoring ourselves to do this. So thank, thank you. Power up. Namaste from India. Namaste. Namaste.